Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Today on the show, I have the pleasure of talking with Jason Harris. You may know Jason as the co-owner of the largest furniture showroom in the world, Furniture Land South, located in High Point, North Carolina. But did you know that Jason is the founder of the Design Network? The Design Network is the first dedicated home design broad TV network with an e-commerce platform. Jason tells us about the e-commerce platform and what it can do for your interior design business. The Design Network features shows about interior design inspiration, home improvement, and shows with expert advice from the pros like my friend Kelly Ellis. In addition to Furniture Land South and the Design Network, Jason also likes to lecture to professional groups and college students across the country on business development, entrepreneurship, and technology application. And I'm just warning you, don't be surprised when you are immediately won over by his charm and his passion for the interior design field. And during the show today, you'll hear me make the connection from Furniture Land South, their success and their business, to that of our sponsor, Kravit Inc. Kravit, as you know, is also family owned and run. And next year in 2018, they will be celebrating 100 years in business. So please be sure to follow our sponsor, Kravit, on social media so you can can witness and you can participate in all of the events and celebrations that they're planning for this very, very, very special year coming up. And if you haven't checked out curatedcravit.com yet, please do that too. Remember your first purchase, you get a discount of 10% on your entire order when you use the code CKPODCAST at checkout. Okay, let's get to meeting Jason Harris. Hi, Jason. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Thanks, Luann. I'm glad to be with you. Yeah, so it's funny because, you know, I, like, been hearing about you for weeks and months. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you got this design network, and I guess that's what all gets all the buzz is this new platform not so new anymore it's three four years old the design network but i happen to say have to tell you i was very intrigued about the primary business furniture land south and of course we're going to talk all about the design design network to be sure um but I have to say, when I was looking into you and and watching the different videos that you've done and the different times that you've talked about your business and your background, I am just in awe that your father started a business in 1968 and in one generation created Furniture Land South, which is the largest furniture company showroom in the world, largest furniture store in the world. It's 1.3 million square feet of space. You have 160 design consultants working for you. You represent more than a thousand brands of home furnishing companies. And, you know, it's a retail business of of 150 million a year. And that's like in one generation. (laughs) It's just, (laughs) it's beyond me, Uh, Jason. What was that like growing up in that business and and watching your dad and your did your mom work in the business too she did okay definitely so tell me about tell us a little bit about that because i'm just so intrigued by a success story of that level well it it just was fascinating to grow up in this family business and it wasn't always the size that it is now Mm -hmm. um you know when i was just a kid um, my dad started our company just really on a shoestring and um, just came from very humble beginnings. And, you know, he was just, an, he was like a business superhero of sorts. You know, he, yeah. he, uh, he uh, just a great man, but he, he started our company in 1968 and we were on just a small little store on South Main Street. And he just saw an, an amazing opportunity and surrounded himself with some great people early on. But our, our business really started to grow when we moved to um, a, a new campus in 1990. We were uh, had grown to, to about an $18 million a year furniture company. And uh, from the year 1990 to the year 2000, we went from like 18 million to 180 million in that one Whoa. decade. So it really was explosive growth in the 90s, but just a, a ton of fun for me to grow up in and be part of. 
Now, I I didn't look at. I mean, I you know what? I actually know how old you are, but because I found that out, but I can't do math in my head. So, <laughs> so in that decade, were you still a, a kid? Were you working in the business? Were you in college? Like, what? Where were you at that point? Yeah, you know, I graduated. We we moved into the showroom on Business eighty five where we are now, right when I was going to college. So okay. it was in nineteen ninety, and then I graduated from college from UNC Chapel Hill, where my daughter is a freshman. Uh, that I just <laughs> <laughs> as of a couple of weeks ago, oh, cool. uh, which is very exciting for me. But um, yeah, so I, I joined our company just right after I, I graduated. But I worked, you know, I worked every summer while I was in school okay. uh, in, in sales or whatever needed to be done. But in 1994 is when I joined the business. And um, so it just was unbelievable. You know, and, and in fact, right when I was going off to college that summer before we were we were putting the finishing touches on this uh, showroom, which is a huge showroom for us at the time. Um, it was about 250,000 square feet. And right as I was going off to school, we opened that like in October of that year. Uh, but it was just fun to see the the growth and the success in, in, in the those years of the 1990s. Yeah, it's very cool. And the thing is, I can tell that you're very entrepreneurial and you're very forward thinking. I mean, let's be real, the Design Network was a very forward thinking idea. But so my question is not taking one bit away from your father, because of course, obviously, he's got his whole set of skill talents as well. But do you feel like you're being part of that decade that coming in was there something that you can look and say well yes everybody in my family has their skills and talents but really this was how I contributed to that or were you just too young and really just you know learning and all that stuff do you know what I'm asking you yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, when I f- first graduated from college, my dad required that I spend at least a, one full year to go through every season of sales. Mm. Um, so I actually spent a little more than a year in, just on the retail floor selling. And that was probably the most valuable thing that I've ever done in my mm-hmm. career is is just, you know, working those Saturdays and trying to reach for those goals and just, you know, you, you just get immersed in it and, and you, you learn how to negotiate and read people. And we, I learn all about the brands and all of our systems. And that sort of propelled me into just seeing where some of the opportunities uh, were in our business. And and so immediately when I got out of sales, I had a real passion for marketing in our company. And we, mm-hmm. we didn't do a lot of marketing. We were very um, driven by sort of, you know, referral and repeat business and work to mouth. But, you know, I, I mean, I basically started our first website, furnituralandsouth.com, and okay. I, I made our first like color brochure and you know, See, things yeah, like that. That's what from... I was wondering that, you know, the younger generation yeah. comes in at a point and does something, you know, pretty critical that helps propel that growth. You know, it has to come from the foundation. I'm, there's right. not one second I'm taking away from your dad, but it just, yeah. I just wondered if there was some of that. So that sounds cool. So it is, it is probably uh, due in some part to the innovation that you were bringing in as a young person just coming out of college and like you said you for the first website and the first color brochure yeah and I was just really intrigued with marketing and uh, you know I, I we we created a catalog and 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 also just sort of systems and processes I, I you know we we went from a very you know paper intense system of like handwriting orders and, and after writing hundreds and hundreds of orders for clients. I remember it so vividly. We, we'd have like these forms that were in like triplicate. And so you, you know, if you make a mistake on a form, you'd have to like flip each page and use white out and, and, and fix it on every page. I'm laughing I because we saying, still we have, have that. To... Yeah. You know, and I just said, we have to go to an automated system. And so that one of my big initiatives in, in, in addition to the marketing was to try to get, um, you know, get us into an order entry system here that, that tied in with, you know, with our uh, computer system. And so that was a big initiative for me. But yeah, I don't, I don't take any credit really for how this business grew and prospered, but you know, I was, uh, I was passionate about Mm -hmm. it. Just so passionate about sales and marketing for, for many, many years at Furniture Land. And curiously, how did your dad or the senior management that was in, in place at that time react? Were they was, and of course, I'm sure individually, everybody had all different reactions one day to a next, but overall, was it like, wow, this kid's got a lot of great ideas. Let's get on this train and let's see where it goes. Or was it like, like, stop, we we do it this way. This is fine. (laughs) You know what I mean? Well, you know, 
that's a great question. And looking back on it, you know, my dad just was the kind of guy who, you know, involved my brother and myself in all of these meetings with, you know, top presidents of different organizations and all the things he was doing. He would just involve us in these meetings. And I'm like, man, what am I wow. doing in the room right now? And then these, you know, with bankers and, and lawyers and, and presidents of major furniture brands. And so we just got exposed to a lot of stuff very early on. And not only did we the, allow us to be in those meetings, but we actually participated. I mean, we had a voice in those meetings. And so we just, we, you know, he just involved us and sort of immersed us early on. But, you know, he had an a executive team around him. And um, I, I'm sure that as, you know, I started moving into some, I actually kind of jumped in some areas that we weren't really doing much in with marketing. But as I got into the marketing, I, I saw some opportunities to sort of get into sales leadership and take that over too. And I, it's tough when, you know, when you've got uh, an existing you know, executive sure. leader that's in place that, and you see this young guy coming in, you know, that he's, um, he's second generation. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, th I think that our team was, um, uh, really very receptive to that and open to it and, and let things happen as, you know, as they would. Very cool. Very cool. And when you say your dad included the two of you in these upper level meetings, was that once you graduated or was it all along through your high school and senior in your college years? Mostly after we graduated okay. from college. Okay, yeah. so we didn't bring the kids to the meeting. <laughs> like you Not were, really. Okay, <laughs> which he could have. It's its prerogative, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I have another question right around. There's two questions I have around this. Number one was, what was it? It sounds like to me that you were always interested in the business. Was it that way or was it like you mostly understood that he would like for you to follow him in the business and then you ended up developing a passion for it? Or what, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I just never really thought of doing anything else. I mean, I just just kind of growing up in the business. I mean, when I was like, you know, when we were on South Main Street and just I would work in the summers, um, you know, taking out the trash or, you know, pulling sold furniture off the floor and loading trucks and even making deliveries and things like that. I just it was just sort of part of who I w was and and I just never even thought of doing anything else. It just was such a natural thing for me to to come into the business and um, I was, pa you know, was always passionate about our business and mm. it just was always a great fit for me. And so now I flip that question. I know you have five kids. So are, <laughs> yeah. yeah, are, are you sort, is there any one of, or more of your kids that have that same, like, yeah, I'm doing this with dad. I can't wait to get in there with, you know, dad and mm. uncle Jeff, or are you, they all like, whatever, <laughs> get away, dad. <laughs> I'm really impressed by uh, how prepared you are for, the, for this interview, <laughs> by the way, but, um, you know, lots of stuff, but you know, it's, it, my brother has three kids. I've got five kids. So this, you know, it's kind of simple when, and, you know, you got the the founder of a business, and he just has two sons, and he's bringing them into the business. Yeah. This, when you look at our the, our next generation, which yeah. consists of eight people, uh, only two boys and six girls out of out of that group, it's <laughs> it's uh, we we hope they all don't want to <laughs> come into our, into our business. Um, that's true. But, that's a that's a dividing that one pie a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, when we have some we have some smart kids, and they're very entrepreneurial and and hard workers, and um, they have they really haven't been very involved in our business yet though my brother's kids are older than mine there he's actually has a senior and a junior in college right now so we'll be facing these decisions really pretty quickly here and uh, they all have different skill sets and uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of how it how it plays out but you know my kids we have a Starbucks at at, uh, <laughs> at Furniture Land South and so <laughs> one, the one place they've always loved to come down and help out is to be like a barista for the day uh, you know in our Starbucks but and they've they've helped out a little bit in the summers but not a ton yet. Not and the it, way be... you two did. They don't like show up every summer and say, okay, what am I going to do this summer? It's been not like that. Right. And, and I, it you has know what? not really been like that. And no. I would, I'm curious now, do you think it's not like that because, and this is not an, um, a judgment of you. I've had the same 
feeling I, I, I struggle with this and I always try and answer this question. In other words, it sounds like to me that you grew up pretty scrappy. Like, you know, your yeah. dad was, you know, he was in business and he wasn't always, like we said, a, a $150 million business. And so therefore it was very entrepreneurial. I can visualize it. I grew up much the yeah. same way. And so it's sort of like pitch in kid. It's not so much that you, oh, okay, I have to find something for you to do. It's like, I actually need you to come here this summer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, so do you think, cause I was that Job way. Labor. Right, right. I worked for my parents from the time. I mean, we, we make a joke that I started when I was eight years old, but I really started yeah. when I was 14, like with committed hours and this is right. what you do. And so the question is, is I, uh, they needed me to help. And yeah. it was expected that I would help. And so I never needed my kids to help. You don't need your kids to help. Do you think that our generation of kids, because your, kid, your kids are a generation younger than mine, so we're not going to go, oh, kids today are different. I wonder if it's we raise them differently, even though we really admire in ourselves, you know, this entrepreneurial spirit and this go get itness, and we would love for our kids to have it, but there's just something that happens when you don't need the whole family on board to keep the ship floating do you you think i mean do you, do you think i have any truth in there like is i think yeah i think right? there's a lot to be said for that and, and certainly our business has really scaled to a whole different oh, so type you can't of, really put a high school kid to work in that business right yeah yeah, I, yeah <laughs> they, we have different places we could plug them in and you know the design center or guest relations or you know sitting at the front desk as clients come in the door but um, you know, it, it is, I, I agree with, you know, maybe my parents needed some help and we had, we always needed an extra set of hands and, um, and it was a different, certainly a different time. And I tell you, my kids are so involved in so Sports, right? many different things <laughs> now that, that I was not, you exactly. know, just, I felt like I had so much more time than they've right. got. I've got my, all four of my daughters are in competitive dance and they oh, dance okay. like three or four hours a day. Right. It's incredible. My son plays multiple sports. He's plays basketball and soccer, but, um, there's just not, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of time right. <laughs> available no, for them. It's true. They're, You're right. My kids did the same thing. They might, my two girls were softball players, and they played four seasons of a year. They were in fall ball, winter ball, summer ball, spring <laughs> ball, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lessons, coaching. <laughs> right. So, yeah, no, it's true. It's it's, And the thing is, like I said, you are the age of – the you know our oldest kids so it's not a generational thing i think it's an environmental thing do you know what i right. mean I agree. so it's kind of interesting but it is true there's more opportunity now for kids to be involved in all different things and of course and you're right like my parents also had a smaller entrepreneurial business and so it wasn't like what's that 12 year old doing back there working it was like oh is that your kid working yeah right right (laughs) so okay so well thank you for uh you know sharing all that because i just think it's so interesting and i from my standpoint i wanted to share it with our listeners because there's a lot of people out there building a business right now and there's a lot of people that are thinking about well my business you know and maybe they're not but i want to tell you listening if you're building a business right now that you know you could think about would it be a business business at that level, at that size, that the generations to come, you know, could be in it. We talk about Kravit Inc. all the time. They're you know, family owned, 100 years, they're celebrating their 100 year anniversary coming up in 2018. And, you know, they have five generations working in that business. So wow. it's nice. Yeah. So it's very cool. All righty. All righty. So let's get to the design network, Jason. Okay, great. <laughs> all right. So this is a very interesting thing that you've done. And I hope you don't mind me saying, it out loud, but I feel like that it's pretty clear to me, and this is not, this is, this is, I admire this. I think this is amazing that basic, because it's like the podcast for, for the same analogy. It began as an inspiration on how to another way to market Furniture Land South, right? To bring awareness to Furniture Land South. I mean, let, we, we, it's become a platform um, for designers, and it certainly benefits and helps them no different than my podcast does. But it, it seems to me the germ of it was to make sure that as many people, consumers and designers you could find, would be aware of all the great things that you have to offer at Furniture Land South, no? Um, not really. No, okay. Um, in fact, no, it, it really started in, in, in it, from the very beginning. It was designed to be a completely independent platform from Furniture Land South. And in fact, we, it was really very difficult, particular from, particularly early on for me to, to have that real distinction and to tr- try to not 
you know, make it just this advertisement for Furniture Land South because, you know, we knew that it needed to sort of stand on its own two feet and and be its own brand um, right. because it's really a brand that um, – is is built for the independent interior design community. They're at the core of everything that we do with this business. But, you know, we wanted to leverage um, all the amazing assets that we have that we've built at Furniture Line South and sort of repurpose those into this new platform. Right. Okay. People like Jason has left the business. He's gone out to start a television network because <laughs> you know that every everyone likes to sort of you know put things in a certain bucket and, yes. the, and it's you know they want to categorize things in their mind. And so you know Jason who is the heir to the you know <laughs> uh, the throne here of Furniture Land South uh, he he has gone he's leaving to yes. go start Start a t- television network. He's going to go powder his nose and get his screenshot. <laughs> yeah, and, and it really could not have been, you know, further from the truth. It was really a way for the, just an opportunity that I saw to sort of diversify and create, you know, a sister company to Furniture Land South. That yes, absolutely would uh, would you know, benefit the company in, in big ways, but it's just a new way for us to do business, not mm-hmm. taken away from Furniture Land. And we want to continue to, to run our retail business and and do it extremely well, but a, 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 a way to really take advantage of some opportunities and, and the combination of a few things that we felt like could be really powerful for the future. No, yeah, no, I, I have to tell you, I feel like it, it is very similar to Window Works in the podcast, you know, and, oh. and by the way, all the way down to is Luann leaving because she's always got, you know, gone podcasting <laughs> uh-huh. and I'm either gone and yeah. still in town in podcasting or I'm on the road, like going to Atlanta or Las Vegas or like, are you leaving again? <laughs> yeah. But, so, I, yeah. but that, it's the same thing though. No, go ahead. It's interesting. It's it's really interesting how that happens with with you know multiple generations in a business. I mean, I think you you know you get in and you're you realize that you know if you always do what you've always done, you won't necessarily always get what you exactly. always got. You know? Exactly. So, um, exactly. You have you have to continue to yeah. You just you can't continue to, to do, always do yes. things. You have to evolve, and and I think sometimes when you you, and, and, you know you come in at that in the second generation or third generation and you and you survey the landscape and you see some opportunities and you say, you know, wow, there's a there's a different way we could do this. And certainly, you know, I, I had been around all these designers and and realized that we weren't doing a, a great job with the design community. Mm. And I said, man, we have what they need do. though. And if we build this amazing community of interior designers, we can really leverage that into a different type of consumer model that really and it, it benefits us us, of course, but also in benefits the interior designers. And and so we went on this journey and really we started it maybe a little bit backwards because we, you know, we started it with the content piece of this first. Mm. Um, it wasn't just, we didn't, you know, and I don't know how deep you want me to get into the concept of, of the design network, but it really, it's the power of, of TDN is mm-hmm. really in the combination of three things. It's, it's, we call them the three C's it's in content, uh, community and commerce. And without any one of those, you know, it, it doesn't really work. It's, it's the three things that are, that are put together. Um, but we knew that um, there's an opportunity there to build this design community and to provide them great business value, and again, sort of, sort of uh, leverage that into a new consumer e-commerce model. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I'm telling you, I, it's for me, it's it's very similar. It's for the same thing. It's I'm looking at. We've been in business 35 years. You know what's what's new, what's happening, what's the next thing. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, I, I centered on the podcast. I was an avid podcast listener. Have been since like early, you know, 2003, 2004, 2005. And so for that's where I went. And, but it's the same thing, building a community, benefiting the interior designers, creating awareness to the initial brand, which is window works, but a well-designed business has become become its own brand, but it's a sister company to the original company and both enhance each other, both feed off each other and both are creating content and, you know, community and commerce, exactly as you say. So I think it's awesome. And so within what you're doing at the design network is you've got this uh, trade 
uh, program and right. tell me the trade direct program. Tell me about, I, I looked at it. I know it was so fun to see so many of my designer friends <laughs> that are on there already. Liza Jones is on there. Dina Marie, uh, uh, you know, D- Dina Marie is on there. I mean, Rachel, of course, I, my buddy, Rachel is on there. There's um, so many people on there. I'm just, my brain is spinning, trying to remember all the people that I saw yeah. on there. And so the thing is that, um, what happens there? So they put up their profile and they can, I noticed that Rachel put up a couple of videos. Others have boards up there. And mm-hmm. then a, a consumer can come to the site and look at a designer and see what their aesthetic is like and then connect to hire them. And then does that all happen, Jason, outside of your network? Or does does it does, does the yeah, consumer engage I mean, with the designer within your platform? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, once they make a connection, right. then they go off and do their own business somewhere, right? Yeah, currently they do. We, we're just we're just it's like providing, a resource directory, right? It's like a directory currently mm-hmm. for you know con- consumers can come and search these different uh, d- portfolios of designers and look at their projects and and um, their bio and links to their social media. And we don't have any stake in that right now. We just we just hope that. Um, you know, that the tools that we're providing here in the platform will be enough for them to engage with each other right. actually on the platform. And we're, we're going to develop that, you know, further. I, I'm on the fence about um, this this e-design concept, <laughs> you know, I mean, because I, I know it's a bit controversial in the design community because, you know, designers really engage with their, you know, their clients in, in a variety of different ways. And we, we hadn't, we've not wanted to try to standardize that in any way, but we've got some ideas on it, but right now it's just really a directory and, um, and we have some great tools for designers. Really there's, there's three benefits for designers that join this trade direct program. Number one is, um, we get and probably the biggest right now is we're giving them the opportunity for this purchasing program. And so we're, we represent a thousand brands of furniture at, you know, with, with our company. And I mean, we have everything from Broyhill to, Baker. I mean, it's, you know, we started a middle end to go to the high end and we have amazing showroom, like, you know, 1.3 million square feet. We do huge volume with a lot of these brands. And so we're leveraging all of that into a cost plus model for qualified independent interior designers. So when they sign up, um, they immediately are able to purchase and source from all of these brands from one place and we provide, you know, on a, a cost plus pricing to them and then, and then consolidation, logistics, support, you know, in-home delivery. So that, that's really the, the primary reason I think that designers are signing up for this is um, we're, we're basically cutting our, mar- our margins that we're selling consumers in, in half. And we can only, we couldn't do that model, that, um, that pricing model, if we didn't have this significant retail business with higher margins for consumers. Mm-hmm. Um, but we said, wow, this is, a, this is a way for us to add on, you know, uh, volume here. We have the capacity in our mega distribution center. And we, we know that really um, there's, this is a solution for designers because they need an op, they, when they get, if they get into buying directly from manufacturers, they, they really become a furniture retailer. Right. And there's so many pitfalls and mistakes and problems and things that happen. And it just ends up consuming all of their time. And so we knew that this was the biggest thing we could offer designers is the purchasing program. And so we connect them with a design consultant at Furniture Land South to, to place all their you know, special orders for them, do research for them. But we also get, give them um, access uh, with their special login to the, the curated TDN e-commerce site. So once they're logged in to TDN, they're seeing their cost plus pricing. And we're starting to see them start – they're sourcing a lot more and more as our uh, e-commerce platform matures. They're sourcing a lot more from our website and ordering on via e-commerce, which is great. So what you're saying is is that – Let's let, let me think about a couple of different scenarios. So, number one, an interior designer who happens to be in the hometown area where the actual furniture land store. Uh, ex- uh, South exists, right? Mm-hmm. Typically, that interior designer would have an option to come into the, st- the to the showroom with her or his or her client, purchase 
product, whatever the discount was, I'm not worried about that right now. But and then the idea of that is so the reason a designer would do that is because you, you that designer is going to place the order with you and you're going to take care of the white glove delivery, the, the, the shipping, the receiving and the la 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 la. Now yes. what you're saying is this is like a designer who's sitting in the middle of Oklahoma actually has this mm-hmm. service, even though you're in High Point and they're in Oklahoma. Is that what you're like? They have the Absolutely. ability to and do this now if they're part of your program, if oh. they sign up and become part of your program. Absolutely. If they're signed up, they, um, and we do vet these, um, applications. I mean, yes. you have to be a, you know, a legitimate, you know, practicing independent interior designer with credentials. You have to upload, you know, resale certificates and those things. We, we review all that before we, you know, enter you into the program. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you're in, if you're a designer in Oklahoma, then, you know, you, there's no substitute for, for visiting this store. If you're doing a project, it, it's the most efficient, most amazing way to select furniture for a project is to come to, to this store and take advantage of this pricing program. We have an, I mean, we have a 20,000 20, square foot design center with every fabric that's up to date and current and all these catalogs and amazing workspaces and all this, you know, 1.3 million square feet of furniture that's the latest and greatest from all these brands. Brands. I mean, it's like a mini high point, you know, market that's right. um, that's open year round. And but so there's no substitute for that. But, you know, obviously with designers all around the country, um, they they can't make the trip here, you know, very frequently. So we we pair them with a with a, a specialist that can, you know, work with them. They and, can and, send them pictures and yeah. stuff. And, and so but the, I guess the, the, the part I missed out in that little description there was the difference is that you're doing this cost plus. So it's yeah. now at a much lower price than they would have right. previously like two or three or five or six years ago before you did this program. There might've been like a 10 off a of, of a retailer or something yeah. like that. It, okay. It, it really, and, and we're still trying to, to d- decide if it's, if it's going to be a, a profitable situation for us mm-hmm. because it's so marginal that it's so tight on the pricing for us. But, you know, we're, we're looking at this as incremental volume into our business. We're also looking at how we're able to leverage this community both to their benefit and ours with mm-hmm. this new, with this sort of new designer curated e-commerce platform, which is really starting to take off. Right. off. And so there's a, uh, you know, looking long with it as well, but the pricing is extraordinary. You know, we've we've done all these pricing models for designers and, and looking at all of all of their costs, even if they even if they buy direct from the resources that we can sell them, we're, they're still better off cost wise to, um, to to purchase it from us, and it you know just gives them so much more time mm-hmm. and, uh, and to design. And the other advantage is is that uh, typically an independent smaller interior designer, you know, she or he might not be able to just go in and select from a thousand different resources because right. maybe 900 of them require a minimum buy or something yeah. like that, right? That's where there's, we're getting to these advantages to the designer. Yeah. There's so many pigtails and, and it's just so tough to try to buy direct if you're only doing a certain amount of projects and volume per year from, I mean, some, some manufacturers are not really equipped and set up to sell directly to mm-hmm. designers. Um, but, you know, it's uh, so designers that are buying directly from manufacturers, they typically end up having a handful of, of accounts that they can sort of stay current with. And, and, and so they, so it they just can keep limits their selection. To keep their just, thing, right? You'd have to right. almost keep flying from the same. It's like, it's like, you know, airline miles. You have to keep flying the same yeah. darn airline to get the darn miles. <laughs> right. Yeah. No it's, matter if you know, like them anymore or not. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is they don't get much priority when it comes to service on, mm-hmm. on the back end and shipping. And, you know, we're, we're at the highest level and the best discounts with all these manufacturers. We buy at the best pricing, you know, we buy container only brands that, that aren't set up to sell to designers, but you know, it just, um, just pricing wise and selection logistics, the combination of all these things makes this like a really, really amazing solution for designers. And that's why, I mean, just, just last month we, you know, it's just been amazing to see it take off. But, um, I think we did about three and a half million dollars with designers last month, Whoa. Um, you know, of, uh, of furniture sales. And that's a combination of their direct purchasing as well as, um, 
you know, they're, we also have a commission program they can take advantage of. But, you know, so designers are really leveraging, you know, this resource now more than ever. And it's been fun to see it, you know, sort of take off. That's the other amazing. thing that, yeah, the, you know, in addition to the purchasing, um, we have developed this really cool, you know, platform with the designnetwork.com that allows these designers to, uh, to create their own profile. And when they create their profile, they're able to really, you know, it's like a billboard for their business and it's completely free. Uh, and, and it's, it's a beautiful website. I mean, it's, it's, they can upload their avatar image. They pick their background image. They put links to all their social media and then they can upload projects. And these projects can be uh, both photos and videos. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very similar to Hal's, but Hal's does not allow the, the video uploading. And, um, and then what we're doing on the, on the platform, so they get great exposure to this, you know, the consumer community that's coming there that needs their services. And so we're, we're already seeing some connections that are happening between con you know, consumers and designers. But we, we really thought, wow, you know, let's, let's get these designers involved in maybe posting pictures that have products in them that we represent and we sell. Mm -hmm. And so they can, they can annotate their photos and videos with the products from the platform. They can also create these um, product boards and product boards are sort of like a Pinterest board to, you know, and they name these bo boards, very creative names. And they, <laughs> when they, when they pull these products together, I mean, it's, it puts them in a whole different light. Even for me, when I see, I'm like, look at that amazing board. Right. That's this combination of these products is so cool. And uh, so they're being very creative with the, the boards, but as consumers go and discover these and they're shopping on the platform, uh, if they, if the consumer buys one of the products from from their board, from the designer's board, or that's annotated from one of their uh, photos or videos, that designer gets credit for that sale and earns a commission on that Whoa. sale. So it's an opportunity for them to sort of have some, you know, have uh, in income that where they, it's just passive. They don't, there's, they don't have to be real active. They can set it up and, you know, we want them to stay active with their profiles, but, you know, and so we're starting to see some of that happening where consumers are inspired. And by the way, we're, we're doing, we're working with an amazing uh, uh, advertising agency. We're doing for the first time and it just happened, just started a couple weeks ago. We're doing a lot of digital advertising now. And this, this firm really felt like one of the most unique things about our e-commerce platform was these designer boards. Mm -hmm. And so they, they've talked us into uh, all of our drive um, it to, as we do all these ads digitally on Google and retargeting and AdWords and all this is driving to these designers creative boards. And so they're, we're, we're pushing the consumers into their boards um, for inspiration. So it's just, it's a great, combination and opportunity for designers to make uh, passive income as well. Well, it's funny because as you were talking, I was writing a couple of questions down and waiting for a natural break. And one question <laughs> like, no, 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 not at all. But one question like, you know, uh, at, you know, a while ago was, how are you driving consumers to the to your site? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. so you're working with this marketing well, agency to do that. But what, so it's digital, like it's ads showing up if you're, you're, you're just out on the internet and maybe somebody has been to another furniture company site so the, the Google thing knows that somebody is looking for furniture so then your ad for the design network might pop up in front of their on their on their screen is that how you're doing it we're doing well there's a variety of different ways and and you've served me up a softball <laughs> question there <laughs> um, but yeah I mean we we and the other piece of the design network which is really taking shape and is a lot of fun it's my really the biggest passion area for me is with our content and so, you know, consumers are constantly, you know, we, we've, what I feel like we've done with the platform is we've sort of defined an easier way to design your home. Um, we, we know those, um, the, you know, the things that, it, that are the components of that for people. They have to discover ideas and sort of get a sense of their project and their style. And so, you know, we're, we're drop, we have this amazing explore section on our website where they, they're, they're, they're exploring categorically and, and by, you know, by room and by uh, style, they're able to look at all these beautiful photographs that, and videos that designers are uploading. So consumers um, are, you know, discovering ideas. They can connect with an interior designer. And we really believe that if you're going to, you know, professionally furnish your home, you need to work with a designer at some level. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then, you know, we have uh, this uh, amazing planning software uh, that, you know, you can plan your space and then shop the, the best products in the world at the best prices. So we've we sort of put all that together. It's almost like, you know, curated Furniture Land South plus the design community hmm. that's really make it, making it easier for people to, um, you know, to design and furnish their homes. And as, as designers get in there and they endorse these products, they add them to boards, um, that sort of... Uh, that their avatar image is then associated with that product. And so consumers can easily see the most pop popular products with designers. I mean, they can sort by most endorsed on the platform. So it just gives co more confidence to consumers as they come there and, and shop because of this community that's there. Um, we're also driving, we're sort of driving traffic through, uh, you know, consumers coming and exploring these these different projects we're also producing content of our own and we look at content as um we you know when we started this we started it and on television so we mm -hmm. we're producing what we're calling tdn tv which is um highly produced highly polished beautiful you know sh tv shows that are shorter format designed for digital and we're pushing that out over um it featuring you know these designers we're pushing that on that on Apple TV and Roku and on YouTube and and so that's a way for us um, to sort of you know reach people and on an entertainment kind of level mm -hmm. and get them into the platform and seeing all the like legitimate things that are there for them. So it's it's a combination of uh, digital advertising, um, you know, taking advantage, really treating it like an e-commerce platform with, I mean, put putting these product feeds in into Google. We're working actually directly with Google um, in a program they have. And and so, you know, just getting it out there digitally, as well as the content that we're pushing out on, on Apple TV and all the OTT devices. It's really so comprehensive. And, and so there's one thing I just want to go back and, and check that I understood in case it's not clear. So when a designer comes on and she joins or he joins your site and they've pr proven their credentials, then they can upload their profile they can then upload a video and project mm -hmm. board so now yes. i understand what you mean is that they can go through your site create you know create um i think i looked at rachel's and rachel had like a lighting board and so she maybe she picked yeah. you know 10 lights that she thinks are amazing from furniture land south and so what you're saying is is that if, the, if a designer has a project board up and a consumer finds the site and has no connection to the designer, that makes no interaction with the designer, but happens to buy whatever hook or crook happens to go into that designer's board and sees a light and says, oh, good Lord, that's the light I've been looking for for my dining room for six months. That's a perfect light. I'm just going to click and buy that. That whole transaction happens with that consumer and furniture land south. But because the consumer got to that purchase, from the mood board, the a commission goes directly to the designer. Is that what you described? Exactly. You Amazing. got it right. <laughs> yeah. So if they if they go, the consumer comes to Rachel's board. They the the consumer sees a light that they like. They add that product from that board into their cart and they buy it. We track that. It's right. got a referral code that's associated with it. Right. That designer earns five percent commission on that, and that commission is um, is available right on our website. They can go into their their custom you know content management. Um, their account on the on the network and uh, they go in and they can see they can track all their commissions and see it right there and we another thing we get from them is their you know their bank account yeah. information so we can directly uh deposit via ach into their account so yeah, it's just, and that's great because really, you know, for I you mean, it works because it gives you know you're really giving the designer incentive to build these right. boards out, right? And then the the fact that the boards are built out is great for you. So when consumers come, it's not like well, there's nothing here to see. Right. <laughs> so I love it. It's you know that's what Thank it you. is. It's all about the the win win for everybody, and that's a right. win win win. It's designer you and and consumer. So that's pretty Thank amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I love that. I mean, so the 
the thing is that there is, you know, there's no limit to how many designers can join. A designer just has to be legitimately in business. And this is what's interesting about something like this is that it's actually something that could be a useful tool for a new designer starting out because sure. not only, right, the exposure and the possibility of passive income, because if you think if you're new and you're brand new in business, maybe you have more time than the rest of us do. So you can create 30 mood boards. Good for you. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Um, but also you're saying that you of your 160 design consultants that you have real life boots on the ground at the showroom. If a newer designer has an opportunity with a project and maybe isn't as skilled yet or isn't as versed in all the resources and all the different furniture brands, you're going to pair, pair them up with somebody at the actual showroom and that can act as their consultant to the designer, right? Exactly. That's so cool. It's like a little mentor program. Yeah. <laughs> like for the designer that doesn't need mentoring, it's just boots on the ground help. Hey, can you go find me yeah. this sofa or this accessory? But for the designer that's newer and maybe is trying to execute yeah. a project and can use a little help, that's like a way of getting help that's, you know, there's no risk for that help. It is. an inc- the, the pro- That's probably one of the biggest benefits of of the platform to me is that this resource of this uh, tenured, experienced, you know, mm. design consultant at Furniture Land South, and I'm telling you, they, it's it, it's what they do every every day. They, yes. they're they doing research. They're in these catalogs and there's so many nuances to the products in the industry and, you know, from, uh, you know, a, a sense of, you know, uh, uh, what the lead times are and how much customization you can do to it and, and you know, yes, what the, qual- what the quality is. <laughs> yeah. There's so many nuances to the, to the business and that's what we do. And, the, and we have great tenure with these design consultants at Furniture Land who, who really even, you know, and they, they're commissioned much smaller on the designer business but they like it because it's 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 a little bit easier whiny. no it's not why <laughs> there's no negotiation involved what so there's no negotiation i don't know involved. which one i want <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's pretty definitive and they get in and they do the work and the mm-hmm. projects are typically much bigger the tickets are a lot a, a right. lot bigger usually nice. um so it's it's good it's working for everybody and how do you do it where if say liza jones is out there listening and she's you know on your site and she's going to access help from one of your design co- consultants now when she comes back to do a second project does she, does she always work with that same consultant or that's not necessary and that's not part of the model like you get to you you might work yeah, with one yeah we do we do we we do assign uh, the designer to a specific like design that. consultant at Furniture Land South and so I they like have that. their their person now it doesn't always work mm-hmm. right you know mm-hmm. like they don't like they're not working or whatever right? well you know or the maybe personalities you mean Exactly. Maybe they just don't mm-hmm. connect. And so we have a director of our program, Michael Hullett. He's, a, he's an incredible young man. He's doing such a great job. He, um, and he, he spent about a year in sales at Furniture Land, so he really knows the landscape and understands it. Um, but he's available to, to you know, pay if, if the design consultant's not the right fit for the interior designer, we can match them up with someone else. Um, you know, there's a partnering program where if the design consultant's out that day, then we automatically sort of transfer them over to their, their partner. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, you know, dug deeply in, into those areas. You thought about it. It's nice. I like yeah. that because the the vendors that I have accounts with that are the bigger vendors that we have do, you know, multiple hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands a year with, and they are the, the three or four that are our go-to. It's right. the same thing. If we start to work with a vendor like that and they don't assign me one p- customer service person, I, I request it, you know, because, sure. you you know, then what happens is they start to cross the T's that you forgot to cross. So yeah. they start to yeah. understand that, oh, wait a second, you know, Liza always likes it when we do downfilling or, you mm-hmm. know, whatever, as opposed yep. to, well, you didn't ask me for downfilling. Oh, my goodness, I forgot. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's yeah. very and exciting. It, it really is. It's very much a relationship business. And that's that's another one to put sort of in the column of costs, because, you know, if you're trying to go out and source this stuff directly from a, a, a manufacturer, you know, you, you don't have that liaison. You don't have that. You, you, you you don't have that assistant that's doing this kind of thing every day. And that's, right. it's a really inc- incredible benefit to these designers to have that, that furniture expert, that liaison. And, and they do end up, you know, sort of getting on the same page and speaking the same language and the f- friendships, the relationships yeah. that, 
that formed through this is is it's just amazing. Yes, it's it's really uh, I'm very impressed. I think you have a really great thing. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting that your dad created this amazing business and who would have thought it could have been bigger, better and something even more. And here you guys are the next generation doing exactly that with it, making it bigger, better and something even more. Congratulations, really. Well, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and it's um, it's it is, you know, custom software development is the hardest thing that I've ever <laughs> like gotten involved involved in in my entire life. I feel like I'm just glued to my screen and I'm, I'm like doing testing of our website all the time and reporting bugs and all this. But I know there's, you know, that it's, it, it you know, everything that I encounter that, that we fix, it's, you know, it's fixing it for everybody. But um, it's, you know, doing, doing something new and different is, is, it's, not for the faint of heart, you know, it is, it is, it is challenging and difficult, especially when I've, I've had, I've had from day one, such a clear vision for this platform mm. and, and how I want it to, to work. And so not, you know, until you have it baked out, you know, I mean, the, yes. until the, the cake is baked, you know, it's hard for people <laughs> to, to, to see how good it's going to be, but I, I've had a very clear vision for this and it's been really a lot of fun, you know, and I think I do have that little, piece of what my dad had with this entrepreneurial spirit of just, and and it's just, you you can't look today. You have to be looking out. You know, I'm looking months and years out at what this could be. And certainly just what an opportunity to, to fill a real need with the design community, Um, you know, offer up a new way for consumers really to design and furnish their homes at at a great value with the best products in the world. And, and certainly the other big piece of this and the timing of it is, the the content piece. I mean, the way that we're consuming content now is is so different than it's than it has been. And we're the the biggest industry I think left to, to sort of move into all digital is television. Mm-hmm. And there's been such a void in you know premium great content within the design world. And so we've we really have put a stake there and said, look, we want to we want to be that you know that inspirational platform with the medium that's the most powerful, which is video and yeah, television. Yes. And and so at the at the at the you know pinnacle of this is you know beautiful entertaining content that really um you know that that is pulling and and pulling people into the platform yeah that's your that's the thing that gets that's the ice cream cone right come over here and have this (laughs) and they like look at all the things that are here there's chocolate chip cookies too (laughs) 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 that's awesome i love it i know we didn't even really get started on all the television programs that you've got going there but they're really cool i mean to me i love them i think they're amazing i saw i was saying to you before the, the, the we went on air i saw lauren nicole on there with her mom mm-hmm. and uh talking about window treatments which i thought was awesome and of course we have kelly ellis on there and tom felicia and you know mm-hmm. you've got a lot of different programs there yeah. and they're really very entertaining they're very well produced that i have to say yeah that's pretty like they're well not, i appreciate like, that yes, it's, yeah. it's really been well, we we bootstrap this whole thing, this whole business, you know, and like um, so we, well, I mean, we, you know, we just wanted to, we started with trying to find people that, you know, that are producing content. We started with Rebecca Robeson, who's the number one, you know, uh, pers- interior designer on YouTube. YouTube She's, yeah. she has her own production people. And so we started with content for, from her and a few others. And, you know, we got it and we got some of our brands to come in and be co-founding sponsors of the network to help sort of, you know, fund and fuel this um, development. But, um, you know, we just, we've, I, I've got a real passion for the entertainment piece of this and these shows. And, and we just think there's such an opportunity, you know, really, we think that television is, is just going to be so different in the future. And it's, you know, like our app on Apple TV, it's, it's not just push one way communication where you just watch a TV show. You can actually, you know, sort of do th- things with I the saw content that you can, you can buy uh, right from there right is that ha- live yet I, I i thought i read that you said that if somebody's watching a television show say the tom felicia show and he's got one of your pieces in there if there's a, like an icon or something that shows up on your screen it means the person can literally just purchase that sofa that lamp that whatever while they're watching the program 
they can. And uh, <laughs> we're not seeing a lot of that behavior happening, well, honestly. With, but it, it's but more that's of a, because you're an innovator there. It's not yeah. happening. People aren't used to it yet. They're not necessarily expecting it. But it's just yeah. crazy because it could be three years from now that that's how we do half the stuff. Like we're watching, you know, Scandal, and it's like, I want that code. Okay, click, buy mm-hmm. it. <laughs> right. Well, absolutely. And so what, what we've really tried to do is it, we always want this content to be entertainment, you know, and informational entertainment first. Mm-hmm. We don't want it, it's we never want it to be like the QVC of right, right, furniture right, right, right. Where we're, we're making a hard sell and you know click here it really it's a very passive uh, product integration concept yeah. where you know you're watching this amazing fun show called Design Smackdown with you know Sharzad Kiade and yeah. Tom Felicia and it's East Coast versus West Coast and you're seeing these beautiful spaces these beautiful rooms, these, these amazing designers, um, and the products that you're seeing in the show, you can buy. You know, I and, like and so it, we're, we're not. I, you yeah. know what it is? And I, I understand never having to move to having price tags hang on everything. And I, I get mm-hmm. that. And I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. You don't want to make it like a car salesman television show. Right. Okay. No. However, I have to say there is some level to knowing even if you mm-hmm. just create the awareness that it's a possibility because I'm thinking this is like ridiculous but I remember I was watching The Good Wife when they come out with that that 6 weeks of the internet good wife I was I don't know it wasn't called The Good Wife it was like the the, the I don't know whatever it was yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean and the thing was uh Christine Barinsky's character one night she walked onto that screen and she had a suit on that was killer and mm-hmm. I was like I want that suit yep. I'm going to tell you what I, I thought oh how <laughs> hard could this be I figured if I'm sitting here right. and I'm not even a fashionista I thought I'm just going to go on Twitter and say you know uh, Christine's suit on Good Wife tonight and I'm probably going to come up with 9,000 things or if <laughs> I googled it I'm telling you what I spent three days couldn't do, uh, couldn't find it and I finally gave it to Kim because I thought well she'll find it in a minute she couldn't find it if Kim can't find it it can't be found I'm just telling you. (laughs) And so the funny thing was is, though, that I don't need it in my face. I might only do it when I'm really moved to do it. But there are people that have that same – the next day I could have that same reaction to, like I said, a lamp or a rug and think, oh, I know I'm really loving this content now, but – by the way, I've been searching for the perfect piece of art, and there it is in my face. So I agree. Right. I think there's a fine line there. You don't want to make it like this crazy, you know, uh, you know, thing. But it's interesting that it's available, and because I don't know of anybody else doing it, are you the first people to do it? I don't know of anybody that's doing it in. Uh, no, I'm really. Yes, <laughs> I was just going to say I, our industry. I don't know of anybody that's doing it in, in any industry, but. We're so uniquely qualified to do it because we're we're a merchant first, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we're not a, a marketing company or a or a you know a TV network first. We're right. we're a merchant first, so that's uh, you know, so we're it's different. We're able to to you know source these products and service them and to and serve them up. But you know, we do want it, it, the the product integration. We're trying to to integrate products as much as we can into the filming into the shows, right. and then we're just making the the the, the products available because. What our research has shown that people really do want to know what stuff is like, you know, when they when they pick up uh, Architectural Digest or Traditional Home and they see this, you know, this beautiful editorial, this beautiful picture, like they want to know how do I get that? Where can I get that? You know, and so um, we're we're just making that a lot easier. And we have so many resources, you know, so many you know, over a thousand brands of furniture that we represent that we have relationships with. Um, it's it's hundreds of thousands of, of items. And so, you know, we're, we just, people want to know what the stuff is and, and that, and the content they're seeing. And we're just making that connection a little bit more convenient and easier for people. Yeah. And I have to say, it's logical that I should be able to find it there. We're not watching NBC. We are coming to this platform because we've been drawn there as a consumer to right. the content of not only the television show but the content of your your store that's the point right. so i think i would almost be a disconnect if there wasn't any way for me to figure out how to buy certain things that i see that i love do you know what i mean sure. so i yeah. love it i love it a lot i think it's awesome very very exciting stuff i can't tell you how much i thank you for joining us today and and sharing all this with us and teaching us all about it and i'm going to make sure that my you know my design designer besties out there know that at the very least they should apply for your trade program and put their boards up and who knows maybe they can make some money while they're sleeping and get a little help from your design consultants <laughs> i love it well so. 
thank you for doing that, Luann. And this has been a pleasure. I think you are such you're so great at what you do. I mean, these questions were just like so well thought out, and you were you were so prepared. So I really appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Talk about an opportunity for you as an interior designer, right? I have to say, I don't see a downside. It's free for you to create a profile on the design network. You can upload information about your firm. You can upload videos about you and your services, and you can show potential clients your aesthetic. The mood boards are right there for you to build too. And how about that? If you build mood boards and someone you don't even know purchases from your mood boards, you get a commission. That's pretty awesome. And of course, there's practice practical advantages for you as well. If you are a smaller firm and you probably couldn't meet the minimum buys for various dealers, now you don't have to worry about that. And the other thing is not to underestimate the value of having a dedicated customer service rep, and in this case, a dedicated designer partner who can help you with selections, guide you through the myriad of choices, and answer your questions about quality, delivery, stock information, and all of that good stuff. The rapport you build, the help you get, the mistakes that get caught before they reach your client by having a dedicated design partner, that's pretty critical. The Design Network also has a room planner tool there as well. You can create rooms there for your clients that you've connected with from the platform, and you can even mark them as private between you and that consumer. There's tons of ways to utilize this platform to grow your business. My advice is, at minimum, go to www.thedesignnetwork.com and look into the Trade Direct program and see how it can help you grow your business. All righty. Now, please connect with me on social media through Instagram at Luann Nagara, and also follow me at Windowworks on Instagram and on Facebook at Windowworks and a well designed business. You might want to particularly follow a well designed business on Facebook because at this location we share a lot of the seminars and presentations that we are doing at Windowworks. For example, Last month, Ian Kwa of House Digital did a lunch and learn for our local interior designers. It was how to create pro video with your iPhone. They loved it. I loved it. We all learned a lot. And the thing is, while it's happening, we live stream it on Facebook. So even if you can't be here with us in Livingston, New Jersey, the replay is always available on a well-designed business Facebook page. It's also available on the YouTube page, a well-designed business as well. This coming Monday, October 16th, 2017, Marina Umali from Marina V Design Studio will be presenting our next Lunch and Learn for our area designers. She is a certified feng shui practitioner in addition to being an interior designer. She's going to talk to us about how to apply feng shui to our personal and our professional life, and she's going to give us five easy steps that we can do to invite success into our life. This is not to be missed. So if you are in the New York metro area, the seminar, the Lunch and Learn is free. It's really nice. Come out, be at Window Works at 1230. Please RSVP so I know how much food to buy. But if you are not in the area, definitely follow a well-designed business on Facebook and make a note on your calendar right now to tune into Facebook at 115 Eastern Standard Time on Monday, October 16th so that you can learn Learn what Marina's five steps are that we can use to invite success into our personal and our professional lives. All right, hope to see you there. Have an excellent day. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.